Boys, how are we going? Welcome back for another episode of the Motorsport Republica podcast. Uh, number? Uh, number uh, 56, I think we are. Um, Daniel and I, a bit jet lagged. Yeah, been yeah. away, boys. From the time difference between Queensland and Melbourne of zero hours and zero minutes, but we were working hard at ASPK, <laughs> so... Uh, good to see you again, Tom. Yes, hey, uh, yes. Thanks for doing it, God's work up there, boys. Yeah, well done. What's, what's with this us going to places, Daniel, and interviewing all these people? It's uh, carrying the boats. Yeah, we are carrying, carrying the boats. Carrying the boats, that's true. Now, thanks, boys. Doing the heavy lifting. And, and what we... So, Daniel, we were... Okay, so we were um, running around the pits, we're interviewing people, we're talking to everyone... Uh, and we catch up, obviously, with Tom just before we haven't seen him since. And we go, oh, what have you been doing over the weekend, Tom? And he's like, oh, so the missus maybe wear lycra and do some Pilates <laughs> over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so cheers for that, Chich. <laughs> I that? was wondering where that was going. <laughs> yeah, I had a, a weekend at home, unfortunately, and I really did have FOMO. I really did. You boys, And you boys were busy, oh, my God. It must have been bloody... Yeah, like it was pop stars up there, huh? Yeah, if you're getting, pulled, you? getting pulled from pillar uh, to post. I you prefer know? rock star. <laughs> hey, rock star. A rock star. That was good. Blasty, <laughs> blasty. <laughs> that was awesome, man. It was uh, great to catch up with everyone and yeah, watch some good racing and do some good pods. Yeah, hundred so percent. Brent Con- Stevens was an absolute Brent, animal. Yeah, he was great guy. Oh, yeah, if you haven't watched it, I mean. As a person sitting at home watching myself, it was unbelievable. His in- insight was amazing mm-hmm. and the stories were so good. Um, just a bit of housekeeping, boys, before we get it straight into it. Um, we've got an event coming up 30th of May with Grip Auto. So these are where these beautiful watches are from. So tickets are 40 bucks, drinks, canapes, everything's included. It's at Benzina. Benzina Stables. Benzina Stables, 8 Water Road, Preston. So jump online, Grip Auto. Uh, it's a watch event for all the watch enthusiasts. So we think watches and cars go hand in hand. Absolutely. Don't they I think ever. They're doing a live pod as well, aren't they? They're going to be doing a live pod. We're going to be, um, we're going to be there as well. Uh, so yeah, he's super excited. Absolutely, it's going to be a good night. That's really cool. So we might drop a link below and in, um, in either Spotify or, or yeah, YouTube it'll be in the or, bio. Yep, cool. We'll chuck it in there. Rad. Um, ASBK, uh, congratulations to our pod favourites, Mad Mike Jones and Troy Herfos. Mad Mike did the treble, went yep. one, one and one, pole and two race wins. That's oh, amazing. And so one, good. two and race two for Mike Jones and Troy Herfos. So yeah, it's good racing. Herfoss podium for race one, but he bloody ran out of fuel in the last corner. They just tiptoed over the line in fourth. Yeah, it's as you as someone said on our share, it was like must be something in the mics, huh? All the boys, <laughs> Republic of boys, killing it. So they were we picked well. cha- we picked the champs. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We interview them well. I mean, we're trying to get Kempy on board. If someone can get Kempy. Find out where he is. I know he's in South Australia. I'm his biggest fan. Can you race You are. We should have got you a signed poster, actually. We messed up. That was good. Give that man some new, new tires or something. He'll be up there, but <laughs> has to use a, has to use a red out ones, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Give that man a sponsor. Fucking hell. Oh, Kemp man. dog. <laughs> oh, that's fucking funny. No, nah, it was good. But if anyone doesn't, doesn't know Kemp, he um, does the ASBK tour. Good, yeah. Good mate of mine. Um <laughs> And he's he's probably four to five se- seconds a lap slower, but he fucking gives it a crack, and that's all, all you can ask. And, yeah, he, and he loves and he loves doing it. That's the that's motorbike right. He's probably got racing. such an interesting story. Yeah, we we're talking like, about that. Yeah, we got to find out. But yeah, great weekend of racing, as we mentioned. Uh, young Maxi Stauffer was flying mm. as well. A couple of podiums for him on the Penrite. Ho- oh shit, that was last year. Penrite, <laughs> Penrite Yamaha. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was just it was great. It was. Close, well, not for Mike. He was just buddy. Yeah, pulled so out he away. absolutely blitzed it. Oh man, he was he was lightning, and he, he was, was sick lightning. as well. What's the go with that track? Is like, could they just make it like a tiny little bit more exciting, or is it just? Oh, oh fuck! Yeah, get my uncle bit. on the pod. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Queensland Raceway, we're talking about, by the way. So we, we did a pod with someone. Oh well, well we, everyone knows. Everyone knows it was on our story. We did a pod with Herfoss and um, <laughs> poor Troy didn't even get to put his ass on the couch, and uh, Uncle John was was there with a the croissant. <laughs> An old croissant wrapper with a track drawn on it. <laughs> and how to improve it. <laughs> how to improve it. Chewing his ear off. But yeah, it's a, it's a fucking go-kart track, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's just really simple. It is. It's very flat. Yeah. There's no um, undulation or anything like that. But God, the riders must... It, it's, it is, it's a track day sort of track, isn't it? It's just simple and... Yeah, very simple. I mean, it's great for spectators. It's You can sit on top of pit lane mm. and see the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of coverage through the turns and like... 
shades and seats and it's really really good broadford's like, broadford like or probably broadford's, broadford's probably a little bit more character i'd say a little bit but yeah. it's similar in the sense it's only a few corners yeah um short short lap minute lap short lap bike. minute lap minute six one i think was mike's um six one or seven one seven one sorry yeah, seven sorry one. seven one was his pole lap so who knows and he, he didn't really mean to do that like we caught up with him and he he was saying that um could have probably gone faster. I just was lucky to bank it in and started raining mm. just after. So ruined a, a lot of the boys qualifying. But a lot of them were quick throughout the weekend. I mean, uh, again, pod favourite. First ever special guest, Brian Starring, was really quick. Yeah. Um, couple unfortunate little tumbles and that. But, um, yeah. Did the boys explain why the Yamaha works so well around that track? No, not really, to be honest. Um, I would assume it's just... Probably easier to tip in. Maybe I could be mm. completely wrong. Yeah, but I really don't know. Um, it's interesting because obviously better braking stability Phillip or something Island like that. Such a Ducati, yeah. good Ducati track, Phillip Island. So and yeah, because it's more flowy, mm. flowy and faster. The Ducati can stay up at high speeds. Mm. But uh, but that's Mike's backyard. Really, it's his home race. So gotcha. So he's grown growing up on that track. Yeah, he's done countless mm. laps. But uh, yeah, good to see him all. Good to catch up and see some good racing. Hopefully, yeah, a couple good more good rounds as well coming up. It's a pretty tight championship. Yep. And uh shout out to Red Bank Plains where we stayed because we some it was a miracle we didn't get robbed. <laughs> um rolled. Uh we tr- had to seek out a cafe which was eye opening and they actually had one there. It was incredible. <laughs> but that place was um the epitome of a shit hole. So <laughs> <laughs> it was shout like- out to them. Uh if you're ever looking to go to Ipswich <laughs> or Red Bank Plains, never go there in your life. <laughs> yeah. It's where dreams go to die. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out just just move seriously just move. Like, fuck it sucks man but you know it was good it was an eye opening for the track and we we laughed at all the local people and their, their <laughs> poverty so it was pretty fun yeah as i said massive fomo uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh it's fuck it wasn't good I uh, well, laugh, anyway. um, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll go. you would have died there actually you can't even leave fucking diamond creek let alone it's gotta have, um, a, it's gotta have a 308 in the postcode mate <laughs> i'll right. be cooked that's my that's my catchphrase Boys, Mono GP, Jerez. <sighs> yeah, wow. Well, well, well. Where do we start? I mean, uh, it's just unbelievable. Sprint race, crazy. Yep. Um, issues with water on the, still on the track and then that amazing battle. Random and it rained in Jerez as well. That happens only like once in every 10 mm. years, I reckon. It doesn't yeah, rain true. Much. It rained in Spain. Yeah. Like, never. So. Um, yeah, crazy. You want to go into our most surprising, most disappointing. Uh, maybe right. hit up the results first. Dan, oh, man. yeah, true. Absolutely, mate. I'm jumping the gun. Uh, let's get on to the sprint results first. Jorge Martin first. Pedro Acosta second. Uh, Danny Pedrosa third. Franco Morbidelli fourth. Fabio Quattararo fifth. Mark Marquez sixth. Augusto Fernandez seventh. Miguel Oliveira eighth. Juan Mia, ninth, and Takaki Nakagami, 10th. Wow. Oh. Top 10, Nakagami? I didn't know. Only because everyone crashed. <laughs> yeah, it was then. 15 crashes. <laughs> <laughs> it was 15 Oh, thank crashes. you. Oh, thank you. Top 10. <laughs> <laughs> Can I take a order, please? <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking awesome. And very good pronunciation there, Daniel. Thank you. Oh, man. Yeah, thanks, dude. Half Japanese, aren't you? Or something like that? Ni hao. <laughs> Sure, sure. Oh, that's, that's Chinese. Good. That's Mandarin. I think Niao's Mandarin as well. Isn't nah, it? same same in that. <laughs> anyway, get going. <laughs> that's the, that's the top ten of the sprint. Beautiful. Oh, we want race yeah, results. Yeah, yeah, we all agree, both Daniel. Uh, Francesco Bagnaia first. <laughs> Mark Marquez second. Marco Pesecchi third. Alex Marquez fourth. Anaya Bastianini fifth. Brad Binder sixth. Seventh, Fabio Di Antonio. Miguel Oliveira eighth. Maverick Vinales ninth, and Pedro Acosta tenth. Far out. Pedro yeah. just giving everyone just a chance. Yeah, he had a terrible start, then got knocked out wide. Who, uh, who knocked him out wide? Who was that? Uh, Zarco. It was Zarco. And wasn't then it? Zarco got absolutely crunched by Aspargo in the end as well. They both went off. Oh, the same that was, corner. yeah. And so did Morbidelli and, and, and Miller. So, just some That's context right. for the sprint race. We'll start there, I suppose. Was there was issues with the track weeping water up back through it or something along the lines of that? I was, I heard. I yeah, I don't think there was still some damp patches. Yeah, I don't think it dried fully. So interesting. But bit it was of, just so weird well. because you know you would have it was those, those three riders that crashed Man, yeah. right in unison. Yeah, just, it was oh, just oh. like oil. You know? yeah. It was crazy. 
Yeah, it seemed like it just seemed like a phenomenon that had to be something that was not water. Like it just yeah, yeah it didn't make really a lot of sense really. And then exactly the same crash as well, just a simple like low side, lost the rear. But literally yeah. all fell from yeah. the same spot. Yeah. It was crazy. It was weird. And then they were saying it might have been wind that factored into it, but don't know about that. Who knows? All I remember was the, they panned to Maverick Vinales and they're like, "Oh, and Maverick's up in the bloop. See you later." <laughs> yeah. but he just dropped it too. It was like. Something silly like seven crashes in the space of mm. two laps in. Yeah. Then Marquez crashed, and then yeah, re- remounted. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know. it was um, it was bizarre, man. Like it was a, it was one of the weirdest like races I've ever watched. But obviously, what do you guys think? Yeah, of the incident? true. It was just a racing incident. Yeah, it's, yeah, same as it's put him out really. Like he was just the unlucky one. Yeah, he he went. Bez ran wide. He ran wide. Bin is always going for that gap. No matter who you are, you're always going for that gap. Mm. Should he have yielded at the start? Maybe thought, oh, I'll probably be too wide here. It's funny. The Who more, knows? the more I watch when I watched it live, I thought, oh, Binder was a bit aggressive. There. Yeah, and, and I think then, a lot of people think. And that. then I like rewatch and rewatch and rewatch. I'm like, nah, Bagnaya was just probably overly aggressive. And then it was a meat in the sandwich at the end of the day. Yeah, that's right. He just same thing. He just drifted out wide this time. And mm. again, you're going to take that inside line. Mm. And he just got caught out at the end of the day. That's right. and the other two did well to keep it up. And you know, ba- Banyai's got every right to be aggressive. He was aggressive against Marquez in the in the main race, but you know, he was it was all fair and love and war there. Like that was just good racing, mm. which was incredible. You know, yeah. Well, I mean, Marquez probably could have copped a couple of penalties. He punted a few people off in that sprint trying yeah, to get through. He, he was very aggressive, but I mean, you got to be consistent. If you're not going to give him, you're not going to give him. That's fine. I don't yeah. mind at all. Like, yeah, that's it. You know, don't half ass it for <clears> one and <throat> not the other. That's right. So at least it was consistent and no one got penalised. No, nah, I think it was all pretty fair. Yep. It was good. Jerez, it just always brings great racing. And some of the guys that he punted deserve to be punted anyway. <laughs> yeah. so it was there any post-race penalties actually on, on going up? Because there was a couple of obviously incidents. Uh, I happened. don't know about the main race. I I didn't see anything come up. No, um, I haven't seen anything mm. either. Uh, the only um, – there was just a sprint race of Quartararo with his tyre pressures. Yeah. Oh, that's, that was dumb. That as was so it? dumb, So man. stupid. That's so silly. I mean, good to see Danny Pedrosa on a podium. Mm. Oh, yeah, that was cool. That was cool. That was funny when Fabio assigned his medal for him. Yeah, that's, that. That's yeah cool. that was cool. That's, that's a nice banter. Touch. Yeah, really nice touch. I think Fabio is just happy to be on the podium and spray some still, champagne. Still and, a top five for yeah, him. Yeah, and yeah, like it doesn't really matter. Like it was always a fluke. He knows it's a fluke. Anyway. I think Pedrosa as well. Like watching the last couple laps, he was super respectful. Didn't try to chuck it up the inside well, of Quattro. He didn't like, know there was. A, he didn't know they were fighting for third. Oh. Uh, I saw an interview with him afterwards. They thought he. Th- they both thought they were fifth and sixth. So he just whatever. Yeah. So he's like, I'm not gonna ruin it for. A, yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. if I knew it was for third, I would have thrown it up the inside. Uh, That's what he said. There you go. That that makes more sense. Yeah, so that was that. And he's fighting Cheeseburger Lorenzo, isn't he? (laughs) Oh, yeah, what's with that? He's fighting Cheeseburger. You see that in a boxing match? Charity boxing match. That's cool. I hope he punches him in the nuts. (laughs) (laughs) No, but Joseph punches Cheeseburger. (laughs) (laughs) Cheeseburger would be too busy looking at himself to be um, worried about punching anyone else. shadow boxing all the time. (laughs) Just in the mirror. I must break you. Yeah, (sighs) it tastes like shit. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Jump on most impressive, Jimmy. <laughs> All right, most impressive, biggest disappointment and biggest surprise for Jerez. My most impressive was 300,000 fans. Oh, you yeah, stole was, my bloody most impressive. Yeah, it was beautiful. pretty crazy, wasn't it? It was great. And the highest it, attendant ever, Grand Prix. Yeah, in and history. biggest in Spain, isn't it? Yeah, biggest Grand Prix, sorry, biggest S- event in Spain in the year. It looked fucking incredible, incredible. on that hill. Yeah. It just... You want to be there. I'm actually saying it now. This it, From the past few uh, rounds of Magello, this is the new Magello. Yeah. Yeah, seems to be. Hey, You boys were supposed to be there this weekend, by the way. Yeah, I know. Talk about Oh, yeah. Fucking not have, well, we, had, we had to go to SPK. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go yeah. support the local boys. Yeah, yeah, you know. Pod favourites and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was thinking about that when watching. I'm like, fuck, these boys are talking about going to this event. Yeah, I know. How quickly does it come around, though? Crazy. Um, 300,000 fans how good does it look but it is it's the new Magello. obviously Spain's just doing so well at the same time so many riders that stadium section is, is just the best and what was it there was people lining up at 6am or whatever oh, it they was they were in there at, six, there at like, 6 or 6 early with their torches chanting on chanting and shit man wicked huh that is just another level of fan and the car park of the bikes I mean like oh, it's, it, it was, was crazy it was crazy it's so good and so good for the sport can Le Mans 
surpass that next round. Well, they uh, got they got they, they, actually, the, they got a big Grand Prix of the year or whatever it was. Oh. Well, they were the previous biggest crowd. Oh. So they've surpassed them in two ninety seven thousand this round. Let's see if Le Mans can one up them. They normally fluff it on the finish line, the French anyway. So I don't know about that. That. Um, biggest disappointment for me, Jorge Martin had a real chance to just cement himself in that world championship um, and to undo his mistakes from the like, past couple of years. And God, I, seems to I, be just, fuck, I just didn't have to. I don't know what he was doing, but just didn't have to. That hairpin corner. It catches out a lot straight, of people. The last corner as well. Like watching those MotoGP bikes go into those two corners. They just don't look real. Yeah, and I think with that la- that that hairpin on the back straight is like if if you have a lapse of con- concentration, you're already running it out wide mm. or trail breaking in, and then you can just lose the front so easy. See Pecco's pass on like the second lap, incredible. That that's, pro- that that should be in someone's most impressive, actually. Well, it was in. Well, that's my most impressive. Yeah. Now. Okay. That pass on the outside, passing two riders, and then turning in, stopping it, not running wide. Incredible. Um, that won him the race. Yeah, it did. It did. It was. It was because you got up to second, plenty of time. Yeah, very impressive. So, anyway, Jorge Martin just should have done better. Mm. Should have just at least stayed on the bike, and he would have just had such a good. And now it's only seventeen, 17 points, points or whatever it is, and it's game on in the championship, which is great for us. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, mm. But like, he'd just be just ruin himself. So well, it went from yeah, it could have been like a thirty-seven point. No nah, more. It was like forty something points. Yeah, yeah. forty. But he finished points. second. If he just settled for second. Oh yeah, it still would have been a comfortable lead. Thirty-seven point. Win. Like how different is thirty-seven points to seventeen points? Well, like it's light, two. It's two rounds yeah. still. Light and day. Man. Seventeen points is pressures on now. Yeah, yeah. You know, you'd it's be nothing. feeling it. It's nothing. Like it's yeah. It's a sprint race now. It's nothing. And and how many people can win? Yeah. You know, yeah, still gold, points golden now. opportunity. Yeah. Not Maverick Nalsi's fraud watch, but. <laughs> That. Um, biggest surprise with Simon Crafer's wind call. Um, not, I'm not having it, Simon. I'm not having it. It wasn't no, wind. He was scraping the bottom. Yeah, it's scraping yeah, the bottom. It was, it was, it was damp patches. He does, um, he does throw up a couple like uh, interesting calls, Simon. Yeah, and I love Simon, but it, they, they deal with wind at Philip well, Arns. <laughs> that's yeah. true. You know, we deal with wind at Philip Arns. Jerez, no, nah, mate. Yeah, there was not much. Um, there was not much. <laughs> You're right there, Chief. <laughs> sorry. Oh, it's raining outside. Oh, okay. Sorry. Fucking <laughs> autism. Uh, <laughs> there's um like the, the the trees weren't flapping. Like it wasn't a huge wind. Like we were in Phillip Island. I don't fucking... think they have trees in Spain. It's like bushes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were bloody Phillip Island when um, old mate fucking, what's his name? We flew off to turn one. Oh, Vietti. Vietti. Yeah. That was wind. That man. was wind. That was yeah. wind. That wasn't pushing Marco Bezzecchi over. So anyway, Simon, you're good 99.99999% of the time. One, that point oh one, <laughs> Come on, bro. That's mine. Oh, nice. Who's going you wanna, next? You want to follow on from your? Well, I did. Man, my most impressive was that Bagnaya pass. And Bagnaya, like, it's funny. I sit there watching the race and I go, "Come on, Marquez," which you know, someone like me. But... Even, even put up that story saying um, how good's Marquez oh, whatever yeah. on that thing. I, I almost fell off my chair when I saw it. Yeah, I know it's crazy. Um, most surprising was <laughs> Bez's form. Oh, like, yeah, that's a good one. Like, you got to remember, he's done nothing all year. Correct. And also, he was nowhere at her rest last year. Nowhere. He was like 16th. Yeah, he struggled yeah, a lot. Yeah, good, good um, Because I remember him, I'm thinking, that's when I started with this. He's so inconsistent. And that was what started at her rest last year. So, that was my... Um, what, do you, do you reckon he's just found something with the bike? Seems to be. Yeah, I think so. It would be interesting to see how he goes on Le Mans now if he backs it up. Yeah, you got to see how he rolls on from this. Yeah. But realistically, the um, the 23 Ducatis had a good weekend. I mean, other than Martin, other than Pecco, yeah. you, had Mar- you had Marquez and you had Bez on the podium. Yeah, so that's right. Both, um, both the model year 23 bikes. Alex Marquez doing well. Um, disappointment was a pretty inconsistency. I mean... Yeah, it's just it's just crazy how and up and down they can go. You know what's so crazy is everyone's like, nah, Maverick, Maverick. I don't even have him in my top five, and I was like, you just everyone falls into this trap with Maverick Vinales, <laughs> don't they? Championship contender, and not even did he finish top ten? No, don't think so. Did he? Let me have a look. Mighty Mav. Nah. Oh yeah, finished ninth. Yeah, okay. Eleven seconds off the pace bar. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, it was. Super- it should be an Aprilia track. And then Oliveira goes and finishes six. Minor miracle. Eighth and eighth. Right. So, I mean, that's inconsistent, actually good for him. <laughs> so he's got better than Noel. <laughs> but, yeah, just it's just crazy. And, like, you think they're Spanish blokes back in Spain and... Alicia yeah. Spargo had a mare. 
Oh, he's done. Yeah, he's, he's done. done. Hang it's, him up. I think time time's up for him. And the other thing is, he's there's so many riders just nipping at the heels. Oh, for um, sure. It's just, it's yeah, it's just time to give up. But on Maverick Vinales, like you, you can't have those performances if you want to be taken seriously. Like you yeah, got to be top six. Yeah, but the same thing he always six. does, man. But I know that's right. But everyone, I everyone jumped on his trap. back. I was like, oh, maybe he's actually has changed. No, nah, he just keeps he's, you on the hook. That's what right. he does. You're right, Daniel. Mighty Mav. Um, let me get it up. That Mav. Most impressive was Peko's bounce back and his win. Um, super aggressive. I thought the fighting with Marquez was brilliant to see. It was awesome to see the rubbing and, yeah. you know, taking it on. I thought he handled it really, really well. Even from the start, he was just super aggressive and really showed why he's the world champion. It's probably his best ride he's had. Probably yeah, 100%. I think it's his best yeah. ride by a mile that I've seen anyway. It was the ride of a two-time world champion plus some, I reckon. Yeah, when he pulled out that fast slap three laps to go. Yeah. Was like, that was wow. brilliant. Yeah. That was crazy. I think it put the nail in the coffin for Marquez because yeah. he tried everything to get up to the back. His back wheel had the attempt and then... Yeah, and going up against Marquez, especially in Spain, like that's as hard as you're ever going to get as a MotoGP rider. And on a good bike this time, yeah, that's he right. did it. He did it with him in Aragon for yeah. his first race win, but he's on a crappy old Honda. Mm. Yeah, and it was hard but fair racing. That's what you want to see. Yeah, it was brilliant. To Imagine see. being in that stadium section for that moment. <sighs> And like, how loud were the Spanish? Like the guy Marquez has gone like a minute, a second and a half, second, eight, yeah. ten, six steps, and then passed him, repassed him, collided, oh and they're right in that. That's and the you corner. can hear him. It was incredible. Incredible. Yeah, that was um, that was super impressive to see. Uh, biggest surprise is Joe Roberts' consistency. Yeah, and the I fact like that it. he is now leading the Moto Two World Championship yeah. on sixty nine points yeah. for OnlyFans Racing. Yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's an omen. I saw the um the meme. What the fuck is a kilometer? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so good. But yeah, um, uh, it's surprising that he's found this form, and hopefully he can continues continues it because he has been very up and down. But I took that as a bit of a shock. The biggest disappointment was the tire pressure thing. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that Great was ridiculous. call, Daniel. Um, what do they do, though, Daniel? What's the. They have to scrap, police it. Scrap the rule, man. It's bullshit. Like, mm. imagine that was a championship. This guy goes out, celebrates, goes, oh, by the way, you stripped your championship. Mm. Like, the fuck do you do that to someone? Or do you just turn a blind eye in the last race because everyone. Had, like, I, I don't know. People are probably going to lose their minds over this, but I think it's the fucking biggest load of crap ever. Yeah, no, I'm with you. What was it, it actually is. brought in for? Safety? I don't even know. Like, yeah, what's so wrong about having low it's, tire it's, it's a Michelin thing and something of safety, maybe with the tires. But it's, what what are they going to do? Like, they're not fucking inflating him that high where they're going to blow up and exactly. launch him into space. Yeah. What's well, the other way? Is it they're going too low? Isn't it? Yeah, it's too low. Yeah. Like, it's just ridiculous. I think it's a dumb rule. I think they should scrap it. Um, you know, because these guys, they're, they're technicians and that are trying to work out oh let's go 0.1 lower or 0.2 mm. lower and that should keep us within that range if your tire heats up to this and you you don't know how the course of a race is going to go and you don't know who, is, how many people you're stuck behind how many people you got to overtake yeah you know what the track conditions might be like if they change it's well they said martin crashed in the first thing like martin crashed the first thing in commentary they said oh they might have played it too safe with the tire pressures like fuck yeah and that's what i mean you, can't, like you can't be blaming it on that no like, and that's at, always they always go to that, the yeah. commentators. At the end of the day, I think they've got to scrap that. And then you move away from exactly that comment and it's more just like, all right, well, the rider's now made a mistake. Yeah. And he's got to own it and, and that's he did, it. He did make he, a mistake. Yeah, he did. You know, you can't blame external factors no. when it's just you on the bike doing something wrong. He was pushing so hard into that corner as well, all race, because Bagnai had that edge over him coming into that back he, straight. I think he did, yeah. And um, he was just like, bright, like you could just tell. It was just, it was a it was a bomb, bomb waiting to go off, I reckon. Oh, yeah, I think he, Bagnai's pressure was amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I think he probably really started to felt that because it's the first time since, mm -hmm. uh, it was the first time in a while anyway that I can remember that they've battled that close. True. Just yeah. them two. Yeah. Not with a third in the mix. Because when there's a third, you can sort of switch off in the sense, I guess, that, all right, he might have been overtaken already or, you know, he might see, like, Binder's wheel come yeah. in front that, um, was yeah. it Indonesia, that race? Mm. Or wherever it yeah, was. Yeah, I think uh, it was You know what I mean? You might be like, oh, maybe Pecco's dropped off and yeah. Binder's now here. Like, But when you've got the two-time world mm. champ or Mark Marquez, like, remember in Le Mans last year, he's like, oh, I heard Marquez's bike, I heard Marquez's bike, and he was... Getting worried and worried and worried. So mm. I think it just got to him eventually. Yeah. It's um it's interesting. It's 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 amazing to see. I'm just it's just so disappointing to see Martin crash. Like, fuck. He 
He's he's just got to get it all to click. He's just got to get it all to click, and he's a he'd just be he would be a world champion. But bro, that, no, that, I can't, that, can't do it again, can he? Well, no, he definitely can. And uh, but I you see it now, especially after that race, you see that Banyaya is just got the race. He's just got the mentality. Like he's mm. got the race craft. He's got um, what's the word? I'm, I, it's almost like psychological. Like even he's forty points down, and he just. Doesn't He's care. ice cold. Just makes the moves when he has to make moves. Has a shit sprint race, mm. and then does that does that pass into the back straight, passes two people around the outside, and then fights with you know one of the most aggressive and fastest riders of all time, and takes it out. And realistically, he could have just settled for seconds and yeah. played it safe, yeah. but he didn't. You know, and it's props to Peko. That is one of the best rides I've easily ever seen, and good on him. Yeah, it's like one of those things you got to rewatch to appreciate. Yeah, he he is the ultimate Jorge Lorenzo effect. Like people will jump more on his bandwagon once once he's done, <laughs> once he retires. Yeah, hundred percent they will. Um, but where, where do you see where do you see Marquez after this? Do you think he's he, he's found his mojo? Yeah, I see him. I see him winning Le Mans. I see him going really well at at uh, in Italy as well. Yeah, coming up. Like I don't know. I think he's a real championship contender. Well, he's only. Uh, what's the top sevens covered by 33 points? Yeah. So everyone's in the title fight. Absolutely they are. I don't know how much he'll impact it in the sense of going to the top of that standing, but he's definitely looking a lot better. He's looking a lot more comfortable on the bike, that's for sure. Well, he said at the start of the main race he was felt stiff because he yeah. and like just a bit tight because he obviously made the mistake in a sprint didn't want to do that again. He knew he had the pace, and then you know as the race wore on, you saw him. He he kept a bit of a distance beside behind mm. Bears, made that move look pretty easy, and then just worked his way up. That was classic Mark Marquez. Yeah, it was really. a good, yeah. great time race. Yeah, definitely. So I don't know. I well. <laughs> I think Peko. I think Peko is just the man, realistically, and just mentally. Just mentally, I don't yeah. think he's the man. God, it's amazing though. Like after Saturday night watching the sprint, I go fucking. I oh, mean, the man. Like, I know, I know. I thought the same thing. That ride was just fucking. Cool. Crazy. Um, isn't it just? Isn't it just the MotoGP? No, yes. It, uh, it's just how good MotoGP is. Isn't it? But isn't it once you go back to Europe, cream rises to the top. <laughs> That's <laughs> exactly that. Maverick fucking goes to shit, and Marquez and um, thing O one too. Yeah. For, um, well, shout out to Chris Seps, our, our really good follower. He called it. He messages on Saturday night. He goes, Bagnai will win the race tomorrow. Yeah. So he came in and did it. Um, Tom, who's been shaved? <laughs> <laughs> that new segment. Well, okay. So who's in your firing line? My firing line is Jorge Martin. I don't think we've got anything more to add, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but, mate, just stay on the bike, all right? Fucking hell, he just settle for your second and your third places. You don't have to do it, go out and be a hero, win a championship. You've already fucking done it last year. You fucked that up, okay? You fucked up guitar last year. Well, Jorge Martin, you've just been shaved. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Made to be in that firing line. Yeah, far out. Watch out, you might be next week, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> what for? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Scared. Scared. <laughs> Being too big, Dick being too big, I reckon. No, oh, yeah, too many zinger boxes, you know. I would hate to be Daniel's manager, that's for sure. <laughs> Fuck a power plate of shit out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. No comment. Be dribbling everywhere. Um, boys, we have to talk. I just don't think we can do this podcast without talking about fucking the elephant in the room, uh, Marini. Oh yeah, great call. He, he, he finished he still... behind. He finished behind Stefan Brattle, the By test two rider. Seconds. <laughs> Okay, Luca Marini. This should be my fucking new. Sh- that you've been shaved. You've made your bed. You've got to sleep in it now. Okay, he's made the decision to go to Honda. He's going fucking absolutely nowhere. It's he's got to do better. You can't finish behind Stefan Brattle. He's really having a bad time with that. Stefan bike. Brattle had the fucking rear soft on to test the fucking tire for the <laughs> he race. Was testing. Tires. He was testing the tire because everyone else had medium, medium. He finishes two seconds behind him. It's nuts. Daniel, no. please fill it in. Yeah, it's, uh, well, I don't know what to say, man. I didn't even realise he was still on the grid, to be honest. He didn't crash, at least. Oh, he was going too slow, bro. Fucking <laughs> hell. <laughs> he would crash because there wasn't enough momentum. Zarko had a p- fairly good race. Like, I mean, and, until he obviously he had a fairly good weekend, I should say. He didn't have a good race. But, um, yeah, just so nowhere, isn't he? 
Yeah. Well, look, he's not complaining at least. Like he knows. He, he knows, knows what he was in at. for. Yeah. But I didn't think he would have realized it was going to be this bad. I didn't realize it was going to be this bad. I don't think anyone thought it was going to be this bad. Yeah. But they're, they're in, in a tough a, spot, man. They're in a worse spot Honda than Yamaha at the moment. Oh, easily. And I wouldn't have said that at the start of the year. I well, didn't well, say that at the start. Yeah, of I mean, year. yeah, I mean, it's it's. I don't think Alex Rins had a. I didn't see him all weekend, but but Quattro are obviously a massive, massive um, step up on the field on in the sprint race, twenty third to to third, and then fifth in the end. But pretty impressive. Yeah, obviously a whole lot of help, a lot of crashes, but. Still had to be there. He still had to be there. He still had That's to right. On. Hmm. Still got to keep it up, right? Where did Mir finish? Twelfth in the main race. Okay. Which is not terrible. That's not terrible. No. Ninth, ninth in the sprint. He actually had a pretty good weekend, considering. Bro, that's Marini, just nowhere. Like it's. Uh, be, yeah, it's half right actually, to be honest. Especially twelfth. Mm. Got points. <laughs> Imagine saying that about our uh, Rebsov underwriter. Yeah, I know. I know. They're yeah. in a world of hurt. Uh, and, yeah, who knows where we're going from here. What's the talk of uh, Yamaha, satellite bike, Primac? What do you guys, what do you guys think? Seems like it's going to happen. I mean... It seems the most logical thing, doesn't it? It's the talk it? of the town, isn't it? It's just crazy to think that Primac's not going to be in a Ducati, though. Yeah, they've been around since the days when... They, they, they were nowhere Ducati. They've been the OG. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Being the major sponsor. You know, so since like 2008, 2009, whatever it is. Hey, guys, it's James from Motorsport Republica. Just want to give a shout out to HJC Australia. They have a brand new helmet coming out, the R for 12. Make sure you head down to your local dealer to check it out. It's got uh, max defogging, four intakes, three exhaust vents. It comes with four different shell sizes and five different liners. It's got lift force and drag force reduced, optimized air ventilation. This helmet is an awesome new street helmet. Make sure you check it out. Go to hjc.com. Go to your local dealer and you better grab yours today. Thanks. So, yeah, I don't know if it's the most logical one because you would think VR46 would go obviously because we've said this so many times because of Rossi and Yamaha and all that but yeah Primax mm. being the, the OG has been there from the realistically almost the start um, and it's annoying because then we have to redo our 2025 predictions as well <laughs> yeah I know it's um, I mean I think the most logical would be Grassini to be honest with you I reckon but it just it's obviously not going to happen but um, especially if Marquez is staying there though but well knows? if Yamaha and Primax link up I wonder if that's a reason why Bez decided to stay at VR46. Yeah, maybe. I mean... That's a great call. I didn't think of that. Yeah. This is inside word. Like, they all talk. All those guys talk. Everyone knows what's happening. What do you think, Daniel? Man, I don't know. It's such a tough one. Whether they knew that early out, probably not. That's a long time to know and a long time to keep it under wraps from coming out. Mm-hmm. This could prove to be a good play by Bez, though. Yeah. If he stay like, to stay. Like you said, Tom, it's more logical to boot Grassini. Mm. But I really see this VR46 and BMW thing having, because BMW are coming in, and you'd think that they have to go to an existing team to hold a, have a whole brand new yeah. team. Well, they're going to have a factory team and then a satellite team, which would be VR46, wouldn't it? Oh, uh, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Not sure. That's what it would be. Okay. Interesting. I didn't yeah, think Yeah, they'll go in as a factory. You don't think then, they'll just have one team? Nah, they'd have a factory. So not like a Suzuki coming in, which is Well, one. when Aprilia came in, they came in as Grassini. Yeah, correct. So, yeah, I guess they could do that and then split off after a couple of years. Yeah. But knowing BMW, you think they'd go in as a fact, full factory outfit mm. and then maybe have a VR46 or whoever you're saying as but, like their satellite factory bikes. You'd have four factory bikes, but one would just be like, you know, the Primac version. It's going to be a few years for them to get up to speed takes, It well. takes 10 years. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. It's KDM, not going to happen overnight. KDM no. have the, uh, almost an open budget and look at them. Mm. You know, they're only doing good now because Pedro is on it. And our irony is they're only ga- he's on a gas gas. Is the difference there, though, that BMW has a full, fully fledged superbike team and KDM doesn't? That'll help because yeah, they've shifted yeah. their focus in that development towards MotoGP style. Yeah. Like in terms of the way the bike looks, and mm. so they they have shifted to that in mind, with MotoGP in mind, I should say. 
It's a logical thing. I mean, like BMW is such a big company. A very popular bikes now. That S1000, very popular bike. Yeah, I'm yes. sure they sell fucking loads of them. Even their adventure bikes are, yeah. are crazy good. To so. be to be a, a big, big dog in the game, you have to have a MotoGP team, yeah. in my opinion. Well, even when we're speaking with um, good friend Damien Cudlin, he was talking about testing it as well back in the DC. Yeah. So, you know, whether they reboot that, that whole project, you know, it's seeming more and more likely each day. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. You, so going back to Yamaha and Primac, yeah. you reckon it's likely? <sighs> no, I didn't see it happening. You don't see Yamaha and Primac linking up? No. It'll be someone else. Far out. But I don't know who though. That's the thing. I don't know who. It seems to be pretty likely, to be honest. I don't know who they're going to get to but ride that The thing bike. is, you've got to remember, if Ducati have two less riders... Okay, two less seats. Who the hell are they going to fucking fit all their riders in? They've got LD Gear coming in, Bastianini, Bagnaia, Marquez, Alex Marquez. you got Morba Dali. You have Jorge Martins. Like, there's too many riders to fit into six bikes now. Yeah, well, they're going to boot. The boot Morba Dali, yeah. yeah Morba Alex Dali. Marquez. Maybe. Mart- yeah, that's- uh, Martin will go. He'll probably go to Aprilia or fac- full factory Ducati and Bastianini will go. So, mm. it'll make room. They'll work it out. Mm. Who knows? I don't know. It would be good for Yamaha anyway. They need a satellite Bro, bike. Of course be, they do. It's going to be good for Yamaha, but Primac might win the fucking championship this year. Got to yeah. think of that. How are they going to go from winning a championship to going on one of the worst bikes on the grid? Nah, fuck. Martin's not. After Jerez, I'm off the bandwagon. He's done. He's cooked. <laughs> Just retire. Saturday <laughs> night to Sunday night. 180. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> That's the autism for you, but... Yeah, darting eyes and shit. <laughs> crazy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens. It's, it's the silliest of silly seasons coming up in the next in the next six months. Oh, it's going to be insane. And looking, doing our twenty twenty five t- um, tips, like it's it, we're all different as well. We're all picked different riders. Who knows? Well, what's going to yeah, I talked about Alonso Lopez, and he had an absolute mare on the weekend as well. He, did, he was yeah. kind of nowhere, and then you know had a crash, which probably leads us to go into Moto Two. Yeah, Furman, I would get right. Yeah. Give us some results first, Daniel, and I want to jump into a couple of things. Yep, race results. Uh, Furman Aldeguer first, Joe Roberts second, Manu Gonzalez third, Sergio Garcia fourth, Albert Arenas fifth, Igura sixth, Tony Abolino seventh, Jeremy Alcoba eighth, Celestino Vietti ninth, and Somkiat Chantra tenth. Boom. Uh, Senna Aegis had a bit of an off. He got ran up the ass of Barry Boltus, poor bastard. He got pushed wide as well, and then it was just a bit. Of, didn't really get the full footage of the of the. Nah, I just saw him run up the ass of old mate. Yeah, so he um really unlucky, unlucky uh, race by him. But so Furman, I would guess first win of the year. Yeah, four winners, four different races. He it's, looks good. It's hotting up. Yeah, he looks very very good. And as Daniel said, Joe Roberts consistent. Yeah. Back on the podium, um, I think he pipped Manu Gonzalez. Is that what we just read? I can't remember. Yes. Yeah, Manu yeah. Gonzalez pod favorite yeah. third on the uh, finished third in the race, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, Aldegar though, like just a star, isn't he? Yeah, he's the ultimate. And the fans, I mean, they like, love him. Oh, they love him, adore him. Like he is going to be a star in MotoGP. Hundred percent, and there'll be some uh, good battles with him in Acosta. Yeah, I think that's going to be the next Titanic. You know, duo. that's it. That's the two, isn't it? You have to it's say. Seeming like it. So it's uh, it's going to be an exciting prospect, that's for sure. Yep, two Spaniards going at it again. <laughs> it's, and just, got, it's, just, it's just over it's and over. And it's on got, repeat, isn't it? The old dude Marquez now, like, and yeah. the Italians. And it's just, it's uh, brewing up. Next year is going to be incredible as well. I, I was watching Aldeguer finish the race and winning and going up to the crowd, crowd going crazy. I'm like, what makes, what makes people popular with the crowd? Mm. Like, why have they chosen? I know he's winning. I know he's going well. But the the fan interaction, they had a whole grandstand for him. Why him? Like, why do they love him so it's, much? It's a great take because we spoke about Lorenzo and he was winning, but no one really just gravitated to yeah. him. And then you got Furman or Pedro and it's, they it's, love him. Is I, it the I character? Is it the... It, it must be something. And they, maybe you see more of them in Spain. Like they might be doing more TV shows or yeah, more media true. and they might yeah. see a different side of them, especially when they're speaking like the native language. 100%. I think it's definitely the character and it's the way that they go about their racing and the domination really. Like if they dominate a field or, you know, the amount of times Furman's come from a long way back and end up on a podium or a top four or five, they're just going like, how good is this? And, it, yeah. you know, it's, where it's bringing back – Spain to the forefront of racing and mm. they're just so pr- 
proud of that. Well, I think that you get a thing. They get the combination. He's a good looking young Spanish guy. Oh, okay. okay, you noticed that, did you? Yeah, he's <laughs> fucking handsome. And you got he's gre- he's aggressive and wins. Yeah. And then you got the combination of everything else. Yeah. I mean, it's just crazy, isn't it? Yeah, people like aggressive riders. Yeah. They either love them or hate them, but people still gravitate to it because it makes it exciting. 100%. And I think it's going back to loving those types of riders because there's not much of it. Well, yeah. It's That's a great call. It's kind of stagnant, isn't it? Yeah, everyone's too pushed to make a move sometimes. But at the, yeah. at the end of the day, Marquez three, four years ago was overly aggressive in his racing and he copped it. Like he yeah. was losing a lot of fans, including us, like... But who's never never lost one with me, mate? He never had never one at had, the start. Didn't fucking have it, mate. <laughs> um, Italians loved him until they, he belted Rossi, and that was it. But even talking to Lukey Luke today, like number one Rossi fan, <sighs> arguably, and he's gone, fuck, Mark Edge did all right, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Right. Lukey Luke, shout out. And I, and, and I did see him like one of his posts as well. So yeah, something's going on there. I was speed scrolling. I liked that post, and I quickly clicked on like, <laughs> <laughs> speed scroll. It's a new That's good. Fucking <laughs> like hell. But yeah, like, uh, it's funny, isn't it? How the table. Of tur- the tails of turds, so <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Um, you know what, though, good for Furman, um, and would be a little pressure, a little bit of pressure off him as well, because he came into this championship as like ultimate favorite and yeah. had a bit of a rough start, and then he's bagged that win back in Europe. And as always, cream rises to the top back in Europe, and we kind of saw all the winners that we needed to see at the same time. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It, it, it is a different championship when it comes back to Europe. They're yeah, used to the, they're used to the conditions. They're used to they've got family and friends there. It must make a world. It obviously does make a world of difference for those Spanish kids. And they would do thousands of laps. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. thousands of laps of that joint. So, yeah, good to see. So thank God it's back. Something about that track though, it just oh, it's, it's so It's the good new Magello. It's just it's the ultimate. It is. Like, uh, it's it would be so cool to be. But there. every corner just leads into the next corner so yeah. well. It's a motorcycle it's a, track yeah, to, a it's a, to a T. To a T. Great track. Like even the first corner, that second corner, and then you got the flowing left, and then that flowing right, and then that yeah. last quarter so, so oh, inviting so, and the amount of last lap battles but like see. you could see yeah. like going to the last corner, like they were nervous, so they were yeah. breaking later, then falling off, like. Yeah. Um, uh, Chicho. Alonso. Uh, who's David the, Alonso? David Alonso. David Alonso. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ultimates when um, Marquez punted Lorenzo off on Lorenzo <laughs> corner. When they <laughs> named it that yeah. weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like the ultimate power move. The, dis- the disrespect. <laughs> disrespect. <laughs> Fuck you, Lorenzo. <laughs> now nah, I love him. Cheeseburger. Uh, uh, um, Aaron, Aaron Kinnett had a bit of a... I didn't get to watch much of the Moto 2, unfortunately, this weekend. But That's because we're... Um, Daniel, we're working. We were. We are busy at we're work. We're on a flight so. with Buddy Bullfrog. <laughs> True. Um, <laughs> Kinnett's set for a bit of surgery. Oh, that's all right. Fractured his fibula. Finally so, wins the race, breaks fucking breaks leg. His leg. Yeah, apparently it was a pretty big accident on Friday. So Poor fingers guy. crossed he's uh, recovering. Because he's actually racing pretty good this year. Yeah, yeah he, he is. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be good to see him back up there mixing it with him. Yeah. Uh, Moto3 results, Daniel? Moto3 results. Colin Vaya first. David Munoz second. Ivan Ortola third. Uh, Ruse y- Yamanaka fourth. Ooh. Joel Kelso fifth. Adrian Fernandez sixth. Danny Holgado seventh. Nicolo Carraro eighth. Stefano Nepa ninth. Angel Piqueras tenth. Beautiful. There you go. No, I thought Ortola won for some reason. <laughs> Nah, it's Colin Vibe. Yeah, there you go. The big dog. The yeah, big dog. Daniel's boy. Yeah, big fan of Colin. Yeah. Kelso was there most of the race, three quarters of the race, and just fell just fell off the back yeah. uh, with about six, seven laps to go, which is really unfortunate. But he's he's third in the World Championship. Yeah, I he's think. doing really well. He's doing really well. And so really impressive. Yeah. Really impressive. He's um he's having a he's having a great year and show, and showing the um his old team, obviously, CF Moto. They both crashed in the race as well. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's a different team in a way because the CF Moto is now Aspar. Aspar. Oh, yeah, yeah. owned by um, Angel and Nieto. Yeah, what a, and all that. But, yeah, no, he's having a great season, so hopefully he keeps it up and injuries stay away and thanks for coming. You know, might just build and build and build. But David Alonso obviously had a bit of a mare. Well, he, he dominated the weekend. <laughs> yeah. He dominated. He was a second up, a second lap faster in a lot of practice and qualifying and then just fluffed the first lap. And He's went, an animal. Ran wide in the last corner and, and crashed. So yeah. it was his, you just tell it was his race to, 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 to win and then 
And then that's the championship. That's all the hebs and flows of Moto3. It's yeah, and Holgado had a shocker, um, shocker yeah, this weekend yeah. as well. And that's basically Him and Jacob two. both had big crashes. Yeah, on yeah they both crashed in qualifying. Yeah. yeah. And in Q2. Big crashes. Big crashes, When it was yeah. wet, so... Where did um, Jacob finish? Was it 12th? 12th. Yeah, nice. It was still, still a great and effort. Still on the points. Well, he actually got knocked back to about 16th with like three laps to yeah, go. Yeah, he did. And then came back to 12th. And there was a, he, I think he led that pack coming into the, the um, last lap. So well, He's looking pretty good as well through some of the practice sessions. So Yeah, P2 and uh, FP2. Yeah, if he didn't crash and qualify, he might have been 6th or 7th. It could have been a different story. Yeah. So. He's really coming into his own, isn't he? Yeah, he is. They're really impressed with the commentary. Say like he's really impressed as a rookie. Yeah, I don't, I don't see him staying in that category for too long. He's tall as well. He's big, big, weighty. Yep. Yeah, we well, can tell with Kelso. I mean, Kelso's not big at all, mm. but just getting chewed down the straight. Yeah. So there's two small straights in Hareth. He just got no advantage yeah. at all. You know the thing, like when we're talking to Jacob at the same time, is he went. He's one of the first Aussie riders to really go down that traditional path. Yeah, and when you do that with like Red Bull rookies or whatever. You're hitting all those Spanish European tracks anyway. So by the time you go to Europe, you've done as many laps as, as them anyway. David Alonso or whoever, anyway. And the other thing, you're, you're, me- you're meeting so much people across that time as well. Yeah. You're meeting the, the team principals and the people in the paddock. That's and then, exactly And then right. you got the opportunity. Yeah. So that's a big difference as well. It's a it's a massive. It's a such an advantage. Has Aussie gone through that category? Has it gone through Red Bull, Bull rookies to Moto Three? Like, can you remember Mil- another one? It's, Miller did, didn't he? Uh. I don't know. I'm, I'm, sure. I, I, I'm sure he would have. I guess he would have. I don't know if he did Red Bull. Yeah, maybe he did do Red Bull rookies. Because um, Miller skipped Moto2, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, and like, it's still proven to be a bloody good career for him as well. So, mm. you know, factory Ducati rider, factory KDM rider, and yeah. race winner, multiple race winner. So. Yeah. And then, uh, who knows, next year. Yeah, that's it. But. Going through like Europe when you're young, like that's where it, that's where it is. And who were we talking to? Was it um, like was someone on the weekend, Daniel? And they were, they were talking about Jacob Rulston back in the days when they first saw him. And his old man um, had to go to a track somewhere, and the he disassembled the bike, put it in the boot, then took it out of the boot because they obviously you know were saving money, whatever it was, and then took it out of the boot. And then reassemble it just so he can race. <laughs> wow! Like those are the stories you don't. And that would be so common with, fuck, yeah, every rider on that Grand Prix paddock or wherever you couldn't are. couldn't have just hired a trailer or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. They were the, all the out of buttings. You, couldn't get the them. Things you do, but <laughs> the things we you met do. these parents. His parents were lovely, really good yeah. people. Yeah, but it's those things. And like you look, you know, he's going to look back at his career. Hopefully, he has a successful one. He already has to a certain extent. So. Oh, absolutely, man. Mm. I'm assuming he'd still be leading the rookies. Yeah, you'd think quite so. Quite easily. With 12th, yeah, for sure. So. 12th. Anyway, it's uh, good to be back at Jerez, fellas. I know. So good to be Le- back in Europe. Le Mans two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what do we got in F1 world? Miami. Well, yeah, Miami this weekend. So sprint race again. Oh, but it was a sprint race Yeah, again. not an ideal time for us. But at least I think it's doable on a Monday morning at like 6 a.m. So... I always love watching sport live. I hate, I hate being on replay. I hate it sort of being like Sunday early during the day. That's something we talked about that at the start of the pod. The time, the time, ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, perfect. Mm. So so good. Um, yeah, some different news in F one. So Adrian Newey's been in the spotlight all yeah. week. Who knows where he's going to be signing to? It sounds like he is leaving, but. Oh, really? You got offers from Ferrari. You got offers from Aston Martin. Well, everyone, everyone would be off, putting him. an offer. But I would put it. I'd be put an offer in for motorsport probably and sign me a car. <laughs> um, who knows? I mean, apparently the Aston Martin deal's off. What's your gut feeling? Inside time? world. Uh, a Ferrari. I with, think he wants Hamilton. to finish his career with Hamilton at Ferrari. I think it's a fairy tale. $100 million contract, isn't it? Who On knows? On the table? Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> who knows? That's fucked. But he's made a career out of just fucking being the best at what he does. Oh. Like he's the best. Imagine being the best in the can... world or something. He's the best at building a fucking Formula One car. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. He deserves to be paid as much as a driver. Oh, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. You know, like he just he, built his it. team. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's gone back it. to the 90s. He's won that many world championships. I think he's won 15 world championships or something. So <laughs> yeah, it, it is incredible. Um, and then the other big news was Hulkenberg signing with Sauber for yeah. two-year contract, oh, yeah. which was – I did not see that coming. Okay. Did not see that coming. So I don't mind that, though. 
It's interesting, but it really leaves a hole where Signs is going to sign because I thought Signs Sauber becoming out in twenty six, yeah. boom. But I mean, obviously, I think they might go with Hulk and Bottas for next year, and then Bottas leaving for Signs. But where does that leave Signs for next year? I think Guang Wang and Jiao is going to be. It's going to be. This is going to be his last year, by the sounds of it. Will he be, yeah. will, will he'll be um, helping the Chinese marshals in the round <laughs> after in Shanghai? Yeah, he'll be back in the iPhone factory. <laughs> Tight nets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Daniel shaking his head. Still laughing, but you're part of the problem, Daniel. Yeah, Daniel, you, you actually are the problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's encouragement's the worst thing, isn't it? I got a message later on the night. Yes, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Work, boys. <laughs> Show them how it's done. <laughs> Love but, um, racism. <laughs> but yeah, that's um, not a lot of F1 news. It's just been a just lead up to um, to another boring track at Miami. Yeah. yeah, what what are we gonna do? With, what are we gonna do with Miami? Is it is it, is it got a big contract to stay there for a, a while or what? Yeah, I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. I mean, they've built a they've built a, a circuit there. I mean, obviously it's a street circuit, but they have to spend a lot of money. Don't know. We'll see. I think this year is gonna be interesting if they don't get a big crowd or anything. But are they gonna get a big crowd, man? Yeah, yeah. They're gonna, superstars. Yeah, just it's America mm. and F1 just taken over. And uh, have you boys just going back to MotoGP actually? Have you noticed that it's, I don't know, they've kind of changed their tactic this year. Like in this, after the sprint race, they kind of did this big podium thing in front of the in Americans. Of the and then they did it in Jerez as well, in front of the stadium section. And yes. I thought it was a really cool touch. Yeah, I like it. And it's it. different, yeah. but I love it. Like, and everyone's partying and there's, it's just different. I thought it was I like it as well. I wonder they'll do Phillip Island, Miller Corner Turn maybe. 12. Or Miller Corner? No, nah, not Turn 12. No way. Oh, there's no tra- crowds there anymore, is oh, there? Oh, yeah. maybe Southern Loop? Turn 1 or Southern Loop? <laughs> yeah, well, Phillip Islands has no good place to do it, do we? Fuck. Nah, it'll probably just be on the front straight. Yeah, it might just be on the mm. front straight, to be True. honest. Turn 1 wouldn't be bad. But you know what, though? Yeah, Turn 1 would be cool. You yeah, what, Turn you, 1 would be you good. You pay for the tickets to be on the straight to appreciate those things. I know that's a very um, yeah, okay. harsh of me. You know what I think, and this is a very rude thing to say, but like for a, I see a, a front straight fan as like an NPC, like not a real fan. <sighs> oh, that's tough. Because uh, I think like at Formula One, Albert Park, all those people that we follow, the Molly Bristows, the this and the those, who are like influencers at F1, they're all on the front straight for the start. A but, Dambi, a Dambi's a front straight man. Oh yeah, that says a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, but oh yeah, hundred percent. Unless if you like taking opioids and um, popping <laughs> pills, then yeah, you like being on the front straight. <laughs> but you know what though? I, that's a fucking harsh call, G. Nah, because man. I, if if you want to, okay, do you watch? I wouldn't sit on the front straight. No way. But you're. Yeah. Oh God, it's such a harsh call. But like, you, you like to see real racing. Like, yeah. You like to see overtaking and passing. When you when you go to watch a motorsport event, all the excitement and all the skills happen in the corners. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see Peko Banyaya, doing my Donald Trump now, um, go <laughs> go down a, go down a front straight. I want to see them throwing it in the turn one at Phillip Island. Yeah, that's I've never thought of that before. But it's you, it's, it's actually a it's actually, actually a it's, not, it's a not a real fan grandstand. I don't like the front straight. I think I've never been there. I've never no. watched it. But they just go boom, straight past. The only it's good thing is boring. you see you get a sore neck. Yeah, you get, you get pit stops. You get the start of the race. That's really the only thing. Boring. Daniel's no. a Southern Loop man. Siberia, uh, Siberia, Siberia. Sorry, see a lot of the track. Yeah, we're Turn One. We love Turn, turn One. One's turn One's awesome. not bad. Yeah, I just love seeing them break into Honda as well. That's in, my thing. Inside of Turn Four at Phillip Island's really good when we got to watch Aussie Super Bikes yeah. there, yeah. and you can watch Super yeah, that's Bikes. A, yeah, we're gonna, tr- we're gonna try to get access to that MotoGP. Yeah, I because think you can walk down there if you got passes. You got a yeah, yeah, media passes. passes. Um, if anyone's listening as well, write in messages. Um, if you sit on the front straight, I want to know why. I want to know why because I reckon that would be boring. It'll be shit. for the start of the race. I reckon. Well, fair enough. If you want to jump the fence and get someone's knee slide, that is the only one. But what's that, the chances of that happening, Sheesh? Well, nowadays, look, all the riders launch their boots and stuff. Sprint race, main race. They True, get that much still. crap these days. Like, yeah. Mm. True, but still, fuck, that's a big gamble for yeah. not paying off. Yeah, hundred percent. Just run to the Yeah, start we, of the we run from that's half the reason why we're at turn one as well. Because you yeah. see half the track and then you can run up and then yeah. try and catch a boot or whatever and see all the yeah. thing. But yeah, strunt. It's a great it's a, it's a it's an interesting point you make. It's harsh. I know it's harsh. 
I'm with you. I think it's. I, don't I wouldn't pay the money to be on a front straight for any motorsport for F1 or. It's normally one of the most expensive tickets as well. Yeah, because it's the Nuffies pay for it because they think it's the number one spot, but it's actually not. I think it, you're right. I'm going to go back to what you're saying about it's probably for more of the people who watch it for the drivers. As in, they obsessed with a certain driver. Well, not that's for the. Why, ra- that's not, why you're saying all that Instagram. Not for the races. Yeah, yeah. It's not for the race. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they, when they finish, they wave at the crowd. They sometimes yeah, come yeah, over. Yeah. You're right. It's a different fan. You're right. It is a different fan. Yeah. So yeah, actually, your point is actually 100 percent correct. Yeah. Like you would rather be on the back straight of Albert Park. Oh, sorry, like the back the, uh, chicane. That's yeah. an amazing yeah. spot. That's yeah. where. That's where you see the talent. You know, like of course there's talent, but driving a straight line. Like, yeah. You do that in your Ford Fiesta. Hmm. No, Chidge. No, fair point. I'm I'm totally with you, man. Nice, huh? Yeah, yeah I like good, the yellow, boys. Grip Auto? Yeah, get around them. Ducati Yellow? It is, yeah. Very nice. 90s. Got nine. the blue? Oh, yeah. Ferrari's going to be running the blue this weekend. Oh, true. That's an omen. That is an omen. It I'm does excited up, to see that. It does throw up a uh, interesting result, Miami. Oh, I accept. Of a staff and dominating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, interesting result for second place. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it'll be interesting. Who went good last year there? Oh, I don't know. Prez do Bro, I can never, re- I never ball? tell you who good went well at the American yeah. or the or the um or the uh, Middle Eastern you. races because they're all. I'm either half asleep in the morning or they're boring as fuck. Yeah, you know? there's so, no in between. There's no in between. Um, apparently, some uh, Max is going to have some talks with Mercedes. Oh uh, yeah. What, what do you what do you think don't about know. that? I don't know about that. I think. I think obviously Max is going to go up to 2026 and then decide what he wants to do. Yeah. Does he really want the pressure of going to Mercedes and like having all new people around him? I feel like his life is so comfortable. Do you reckon he feels pressure though? Well, the thing is though, like he doesn't give a fuck anyway. That's what I mean. (laughs) Yeah. Like, but like, yeah, that's, yeah. I get what you're saying. Why would he, why would he change his lifestyle for no reason? Like, well, maybe he wants to do a Rossi. I don't think he cares, bro. He seems I, that kind of, we, and we always say it, he seems that kind of guy that contract's done, you know what, boys, see you later, I'm out. He doesn't yeah. care if he's 10-time world champion or mm, three-time yeah. world champion. Like, I think we spoke about this. He could be the guy where, he, yeah, okay, he retires, he doesn't care, but he also could be the guy where, yeah, he's like, oh, I need a challenge. Yeah, who you knows? Know, I want to go to Mercedes and then win on that. Hmm. Who knows? Does he have any tie to Mercedes at all, like previously with nothing. his old man? I don't believe nothing. so. Nothing. That Red Bull through and through all through his CUNY career. They signed him as like a 12-year-old kid or something. So Red Bull would just throw so much money at him, wouldn't they? Because oh, as, as Mercedes, do you have to be monster? Well, like with you, Hamilton you and everything? You probably do. I wonder if they've got it on their um, car. Do they have it on their car, do you know? I, don't I know haven't they seen do, it on their I, car. I, it just seems like uh, most Mercedes drivers that I remember have always had been monster. Which like energy drinks is a massive thing now for contracts. Well, the thing is as well, I think I think Hamilton was a personal sponsor of Monster, and then I think they took over the Mercedes sponsor as well. Yeah, it's like um, when Marquez was with Repsol, mm. like they had the clause that if Marquez left, then they leave as well. So yeah. it's how big a driver is, and energy drinks are now to contracts. But if Monster throws massive money at, you know, I don't think it, it matters to Max anyway. But if they throw, like they would have to throw massive money at it, mm. or Red Bull would throw even bigger money just to keep him there because mm. he's such a just a marketing ploy, you know? Yeah, hundred percent. I couldn't see it. I just had a quick yeah. dive. I couldn't see it on their car. No, the I, don't think, I don't think it does. It's more of a personal sponsorship to Hamilton. I'm surprised that they don't do energy drinks. Don't do more on the F1 cars. Mm. Imagine the Monster Energy F1 car. It'd be kind of cool. That'd be pretty dope. Stick it on the Sauber now. It's the same colours. Yeah, that's all true. Right. That looks so ugly, that car. I thought I liked it, but it's disgusting. It's going to look good as an Audi, I reckon. It'll be red and grey probably or something Yeah, like that. that'll, that'll go hard. Mm. That'll look tough as. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Uh, Jet Lawrence, Don, I don't know, Don, dominated, but he won on the weekends. Uh, Has he been as dominating as he was nah, last year? Supercross is so much harder. He's a, in, in motocross, he went... 24 and 0 and there hasn't been another season of motocross yet no, no, no. Uh, okay and he's obviously racing supercross now and leading the points and taking it up to cooper webb who is a dog in the fight so keep your eyes on him all your listeners jet lawrence monster energy supercross he's uh he's yeah, the man yeah he's gonna maybe take it out again so he's an animal yeah aussies mate we do it well um red bull not red bull yeah racing bulls daniel ricardo any talk of him what's going on there 
No, nothing really. I think he. Um, I think that was all a fluff that he's got three races to prove himself. Just trying to put the pressure on him. Mm. I don't think he's doing anything completely wrong. He's just he's had some unlucky, yeah, he's unlucky been results. Unlucky. He got taken out. No, not taken out, but he had an accident, obviously in 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 Japan with Albon. Yeah, um, and then got unlucky last weekend. So we'll see. Let's see what happens. He was going all right before Stroll ran up his ass. Yeah, that was a fucking. Do you remember? Race. You remember Sonoda was nowhere in China, and then surprising. Isn't he still going around the track? <laughs> yeah, true. True, true, true. <laughs> <laughs> He's helping the marshals get Bottas's car. Out <laughs> Ta. <laughs> Little fella. That's all she wrote, I reckon, boys. Yeah, boys, oh, that's all I got. Tips. No, we nah, don't do that anymore. No, nah, because we're, we're two on the fly. We yeah, have to think well. about it. Yeah. Actually, can I just go refer back? I'll, I wanted to do this from now on. And uh, I didn't ask, sorry, why you looked that up. I didn't yeah. ask. I got a little too busy and I just completely forgot to ask for our fan questions. So that'll be next week. Ah, uh, beautiful. Um, I just wanted to go to our tips for this weekend of compare how we went. So, oh, yeah. So Daniel went Peko... Vinales, Martin, Acosta, Bastianini. So you got. The I think I got Bastianini and Peco right. Did, that was about you it. You did. You did. I had. Oh, James oh had God. Peco, Mark Marquez. James, well done. Hey, the top two. Bro. Oh yeah, I did too. Pedro Acosta, Jorge Martin, Bastianini got fifth. You got two. You got, you got three bit, out of the five. The beast got fifth. Did he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Oh, fuck. It, it was quiet over that weekend, wasn't it? Didn't hear much about. No, and I had half a shocker. Um, Binder looked all right. Yeah, he looked better than normal, but he that was a big call though, Chidge. Oh, you had to throw it up. You can't, yeah, just, you, you can't. know, you got a fucking bit of. Hey, proud of you, bro. Thanks, bro. Um, you're, you're, you're front, you're a front straight man, but that's all right. <laughs> that's that's gonna be the new call. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. see it. Influencers say, "Hey, she's a front straight girl." <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Bolly like Bristow, how you going? Uh, <laughs> Brad Binder, Jorge Martin second, obviously. Yeah, uh, didn't uh, Vinales third out of shocker. <laughs> Uh, Mark Marquez fourth, Pedro Acosta fifth. Pedro Acosta, Pedro, Pedro Acosta actually had a fucking massive crash and warm up. Did yeah, you guys see yeah, that? Oh yeah. my fucking god, fucking massive! If that not was, much runoff actually. No, it's scary. Would that though, to isn't replace it? the wall. Yeah, so I think that's going to be a big confidence hit before the race as well. Yeah, yeah, true. To a certain extent, yeah, I mean, true. You know, like, when those those he uh, he's such a Mark Marquez like he used to do those crashes all the time and then yeah. go out and mm. still either win or like put it on the. Podium, whatever but he went back to 16th or 17th, didn't he? And then I think caught his way back. I think to he 10th, got bullied, just, bullied yeah. in the first corner. Yeah, first couple corners. I think he, I think you'll you'll start to find his feet a little bit more, but it'll be mm. a bit of a, an uphill battle these next few rounds in in Europe. Yeah, because a lot of yeah. these stronger guys will really ramp so it up. So is it uh, Le Mans and then Magello? Magello. Oh, Magello is going to be. A good is race. that back to back? Uh, normally, they're a week break. I think it's a week break in between. Yeah. Oh my god, how good is that going to be? Yep. I've got some good races coming up. This uh, is where it's at. This is this is our winter is fucking the yeah, best. It is takes me back to COVID twenty twenty. It was the only thing we were watching. Fuck, it was good. Yeah, true. It was the only thing that was on, wasn't it? Yep. Fuck, I love MotoGP. Fuck, it's the best. And I love Mark Marquez. <laughs> <laughs> I've never thought I'd. I'd <laughs> and I've on never, that note, I've we will go. I'd see that. See you, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> uh...